Now, I've always been a pretty short to average hitter of the golf ball, but recently I've started to pick up some distance and just the other day when testing some golf clubs, I hit this drive. That is scary. On the line, quite literally, 164 ball, spinning at 24, very manageable. 286 carry, 308 total. Yes, please. Now, that for me is a good four or five miles an hour faster than I usually hit. It's also a good 15 to 20 yards further than I would usually hit. So how on earth have I managed to put 15 to 20 yards on my drives? Is it because of the latest and greatest driver offerings of 2023? Or is it a few things I've tweaked in my game to hit the middle of the face more, to keep the ball actually more in play? and actually to pick up more speed. Hi everyone, my name is James Robinson and welcome to this YouTube channel. Guys, do me a favor and smash that subscribe button if you are new to the channel and you enjoy daily golf related videos. Today, I'm going to discuss all the secrets behind how I've picked up a little bit of speed and a little bit of distance. You see guys, it is that time of year for me where I like to test all the latest golf clubs and bring the reviews to you guys on my YouTube channel. So to do that, I end up hitting quite a lot of golf balls especially in the studio to test them for ball speed, for spin rate, for distance, everything you guys want to see and everything I want to see to compare these drivers. So the first thing I've done is just play more reps than ever before. I've made more golf swings than ever before. I've tried to swing faster than ever before just because I like to have fair and consistent numbers when I test maybe a tailor-made against a Callaway, a Titleist against a Ping, a Mizuno against a PXG, for example. And the only way I can really do that is just to swing pretty much as fast as I can. But I have to do it with consistency and I have to make sure I'm hitting the middle of the face more often. That's the second thing which I'm doing. I'm keeping myself a little bit more connected both on the way back and on the way down. So I don't lose sight of where that club face is. I don't lose sight of where the middle of the face is. And that's been massively helped by a lesson I had right at the start of the year with a certain David Ledbetter, one of the world's most renowned coaches, one of the best golf coaches on the planet. And what he helped me do was yes, keep myself a little bit more connected. Yes, have a better looking takeaway to start with. So keep that left shoulder in, make sure the club face stays out. Yeah, you see that in actual fact, if you look at- it Squares the arc, isn't it? Yeah, it's square yeah. the arc and look, in actual fact, it has got inside the line, but it hasn't gone rapidly inside the line, <laughs> right? So we can see it's- I always say you want to split the swing up into two. Yeah. The start, okay, which sort of sets the trend as far as the way the hand, yeah. the way the club is moving, plus the fact that you've got this connection between the hand and the body. So yeah. this is what we call the synchronization of the swing. Yeah, the little gizmo that pointed down the line here, which really helped. And you may remember a video I did on the back of that, where I just came out and actually played using this kind of two-part takeaway. Look, do we go? Oh, stop it. Just a little peely fade down the middle. And I've been doing that just as a warm-up. Try again, that wasn't very good. I mean, look at that for a shot. That for me is the optimum ball flight, a big, high, nice, straight shot, if anything, just fading to the right. Because if I try and just hit a nice straight shot that just fades to the right, generally I'm gonna have the right swing sequences, I'm gonna have the right launch characteristics to make sure I hit the middle of that face. One thing which I used to do, which I thought would bring me more distance, which actually hindered it, was try and hit a big high draw all the time. The problem with that is I would come too far from the inside, so it'd be more of a glancing blow anyway. So you might get more clubber speed, but you're not gonna get more ball speed, and I'd generally strike it out the toe. So you're definitely not gonna get more ball speed. You'd get lower spin, the ball would dip out the air, and that's how I would generally play golf. So just by not doing that, just by launching the ball a little bit higher, seeing it actually get to the top of a flight, and then from there, just feathering down to the right helps me know I can hit the ball harder because it's never gonna turn over on me. So thank you, Mr. Ledbetter, for all that wisdom. So as well as that, I have actually tried to add a little bit of speed in there. And because my takeaway is a better sequence, my swing actually looks longer at the top. It doesn't look this long. It doesn't look as long as I would like. 
but it does look a little bit longer. I do get a little bit further back, which is obviously going to present a longer lever system, which is obviously going to create a little bit more club head speed. Now, as long as I hit the middle of the face there, this is the be all and end all. So many people talk about club head speed when the number we have to be talking about is that ball speed, is how fast does that ball come off that driver face and pretty much where is it pointing? You see, the key to hit long drives is yes, you need ball speed. Yes, you need launch angle. You also need an element of the right spin. So I'm always trying to get around 2000 spin. Anything below that for me tends to dip out the air. That would be what I would see when I would hit it out the toe and it would kind of turn over a little bit. If I can get 2000, 2100, for me, that's a really nice launch angle, a nice launch characteristic, should I say. And for me to help that, I feel like now I'm more connected on the way back. And this, this is me just talking how I feel like I'm swinging at the moment. The left shoulder stays in, but because the head works out, that feels like it's a wider takeaway. It feels like it's much wider out here. So again, that's how I can get a little bit longer at the top. And as I start to sequence down into the ball, you see how my lower body starting that sequence, my left side of the lower body in particular, it's still wide on the way back. It's going to be nice and shallow into the ball. A shallow angle of attack is going to allow me to present plenty of dynamic loft to that ball. And with a low spin driver, that is key for me because I can then get the ball launching, as I said, through a nice window with low spin. So how can you make sure that your lower body is dictating the start of the downswing? It all starts from the sequence on the way back. And this is something which I thought I used to be good at until I started watching my swing back and watching more re-edits and just kind of drawing all over it a little bit and thinking, actually, you know what, James, what you need to do is separate that. You can hear my voice change as I just rotate my shoulders and my upper body, separate that takeaway even more. So then you can really feel like, and I even maybe come off the ground a bit with my left heel, feel like I then push into that left side keep my sternum back nice and shallow through and I actually start and I'll put that swing again on screen for you now because what I have a tendency to do is actually come in and then lose my footing a bit this way back now that's something which a lot of long drivers do it's not something I've tried to do I'm not for one second saying I'm a long driver but for me to add yardage on that's something which I probably have to do I probably have to change my dynamics a little bit and yes if you do that in the wrong occasion you might struggle to find the middle of the face and sacrificing that center strike really isn't what you want to be doing drivers are more forgiving nowadays um winter is still here but you still want to strike it out of the middle the sweet spot is still in the middle you're still going to get the maximum gains the maximum ball speed out of the middle of the face I can't tell you that enough so realistically if I do all those things I should be able to hit exactly the same shot here with the Callaway drive, you can see how I haven't actually put a new driver into play yet. I'm still testing them because the season still isn't here. But look at that, lovely big high fade. Again, down the middle of the fairway. That was actually a tiny bit toey. And you can see my practice routine there. I'm trying to get nice and long back and then really work down, use the ground, use my legs, use my bigger muscles. Guys, there's no secrets there. That is how I put a little bit of distance on them. For me, I am seeing that out on the golf course. I'm starting to kind of be up with Chris when we're playing. I'm starting to outdrive a few of my friends as well, which is fantastic. But it's not for every shot. It has to be struck out the middle. And if you don't strike out the middle, you're not going to get the ball speed. You're not going to get the distance. And then from there, you're back to square one. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Smash that subscribe button if you want to see more. And apart from that, I'll see you all at exactly the same time tomorrow. Um, I didn't even need three. Goodbye.